Hello friends, today I am going to begin the daily current affairs for January 23, 2020. So the first question is, which among the following countries has been declared as reciprocating territory by India? Your options are UAE, Bangladesh, Malaysia, France. So these four territories are given to you. Now your options are UAE and Bangladesh, then Bangladesh and Malaysia, then you have UAE, Bangladesh and Malaysia and all of the above. So the answer is UAE, Bangladesh and Malaysia. Now recently uh, this reciprocating territory was in news because Ministry of Law and, uh, Law and Justice issued an extraordinary gazette notification which declared UAE as reciprocating territory under section 44A of Civil Procedures Code 1908. So the odd, uh, what does a reciprocating territory mean? A reciprocating territory means if there is an order which is passed by a certain designated, designated court called superior court from a country which is under the reciprocating territory, that order can be implemented in India by filing a copy of the decree concerned in a district court. So what does it mean? See, if there is an order, for example, there is, uh, let us say, there is the highest court of uh, UAE. So if it passes some order, and since it is a reciprocating territory, now that order uh, can, its decree can also be implemented by submitting that decree in the district court of India, any district court of India. So uh, this is uh, called a reciprocating territory. Now there are few countries which are reciprocating territories for India. For example, it is UK, then Singapore, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Trinidad and Tobago, New Zealand, Cook Islands, Hong Kong, Papua New Guinea, it is G-U-I-N-E-A, please, uh, please correct it. Then it is Fiji, Aden and Western Samoa. Now next question, which among the following statements is or are true as per the annual status of education report ASER 2019? So three, two statements are given to you. First st statement st states that, it has been conducted every year since 2005 in all rural districts of India. And the second statement states that primary students of government school have outperformed their counterparts from private school. So your options are only one is true, only two is true, both one and two are true and neither one nor two are true. So the answer is one only. That is, it is conducted every year since 2005 in all rural, rural districts in India. Now, let us see something about ASER. It is very, very important. Either you will get a direct question from uh, in the competition or you can use the data if you are writing the mains answers. So, statement 1 is correct and statement 2, 2 is incorrect. Now, ASER or Annual Survey of Education Report Every year it is released by an NGO called NGO Pratham. So it has been conducting this survey since 2005 in all rural districts and it is a household based, based survey. That means they are not going to schools and seeing the report cards. They go to the houses and then, then they, they are doing the survey. So and uh, another point, very important point is it is a citizen, largest citizen led survey in India. And it is the only source of information on children's learning outcomes that is available in India. So we do not have such a large survey for specifically for the primary or secondary education. Now this survey is very very important for primary education. Because in the primary education students learn the numerical abilities, language abilities which are very important for uh, their further learnings. So that's why this survey is very very important for policy makers also. Now according to this survey of the 6 year old in class 1, 41.5% of those in private schools they could read the words in comparison to only 19% of government schools. Similarly, 28% of those students in government schools could do the simple addition whereas 47% of the students could do in a private school. So here what, what does the survey say? Survey shows clearly that private school students are far better in, uh, in the educational targeting system as compared to the government schools. 
Now other findings of ASER survey is only 16% of children in class 1 in 26 survey dis uh, rural districts can read at, uh, at the prescribed level. So if you talk about the very backward districts, out in those backward districts only 16% students are able to read and 40% can't even recognize the letter. So this is a and the, these are class 1 students. So this is the condition of children in the primary education. Then another problem was 41% of the children could recognize only 41% could re recognize a two digit number. And uh, this survey also highlights the gender gap between the educational scenario between girls and boys for example 39 percent of the girls aged between 6 to 8 are enrolled in private schools whereas 48 percent of boys are enrolled in private schools now one problem is there according this survey itself so shows here that the learning outcomes are better in private schools as compared to government schools now another thing you can see is girls are more uh, sent to the uh, government schools as compared to the boys so uh, here you can see from primary education itself a gender divide is prevailing in India now next question which is the most populated city in India uh, sorry polluted city in India according to Greenpeace India re recent report so Greenpeace had recently conducted a survey on the pollution now, which is the most polluted city according to Greenpeace? Please remember, it is uh, this question is asking according to Greenpeace because um, the answers will vary according to the question. So, the options are Delhi, Jharia, Lucknow and Prayagraj. And the answer is Jharia. Jharia, according to the report released by G uh, Greenpeace, Jharia, which is a city in Jharkhand, is the most polluted city in India. And the second most polluted city by Greenpeace is Dhanbad. Now both these cities are in Jharkhand. And Jharia as you know is a rich in coal belt area. It is a very rich in coal. So that is one of the reasons why the pollution is also higher in Jharia. Now report state also stated that 6 of the country's 10 most polluted cities are in Uttar Pradesh. And uh, the, the least polluted city in India is Lunglei which is in Mizoram. Now, Mizoram's Lunglei city is the only city with par particulate matter levels which are as per the or which are under the WHO's prescribed levels. That means every other city which was surveyed by Greenpeace, almost 287 cities were surveyed. Now, every other city had the pH levels which were more than the WHO prescribed levels. Now, Greenpeace uh, had used the data from CPCV that, uh, that is con Pollution Control Board which releases data on particular matters of 287 cities. Now this data was used by Greenpeace to rank the most polluted cities in India. Now next question. Which state is the first state to implement agricultural land leasing policy? Your options are Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal and Uttarakhand. The answer is Uttarakhand. So state government of Uttarakhand has recently released a notification and it has where it has made a policy to lease agricultural land and thus by releasing this policy Uttarakhand has become the first state in India to implement such a policy now according to this policy any institution company or NGO can lease and farm land for up to 40 30 years however the leased land should be below 30 acres now the farmer who is owning the land he will receive corresponding rent during the leased period now question number 5, what is the name of indigenous artillery guns which shall be inducted into Indian Army? So your options are Shrirang, Dhanush, Sarang and Shaurya. Answer is Sharang. Now as per recent announcement by Indian Army, the first batch of 18 indigenously upgraded Sharang artillery guns are to be inducted in the Army by March 31st, 2020. Now something about Sharang, its barrel is indigenous, uh, its barrel is indigenously designed and the barrel has been upgraded from 130 mm to 155 mm. Now because of this increase what has happened is the hitting range has been increased from 12 km to 39 km. So for making Sharang, the gun carriage factory in Jabalpur had been awarded the global contract 
and the project was done with the help of ordnance factory indian army and drdo now question number 6 consider the following statements regarding national advisory council now uh, there are three statements that are given to you national advisory council will suggest measures to foster a culture of innovation among citizens and students second it will be chaired by prime minister and third founders of india's top 10 startups would be ex officio members of the council so you have to tell which of these three statements are correct so option a is 1 and 2 option b is 3 only option c is 1 and 3 and option d is 1 2 and 3 so your answer is 1 only that means sorry uh, c option should be 1 only please correct it c option is 1 only now uh, your answer is 1 only See why one only because National Startup Advisory Council it will advise the government on measures that are needed to build a strong ecosystem for nurturing innovation and startups in country. Now this council will suggest measures to foster a culture of innovation among citizens and students. So this is the first statement that is given. So the council is going to do what? It will suggest measures to increase or to create a culture of innovation among citizens and students in particular to promote innovation in all sectors of economy ex across the country now this nac uh, second statement here is given to you that it will be chaired by prime minister no it will not be chaired by prime minister it will be chaired by minister of commerce and industry then uh, the composition of council it will consist of non-official members now these non-official members will be nominated by central government and they will come from various categories like they can be founders of successful startups or they can be veterans who have grown scaled companies in, in India. Then they can be persons who can represent the interest of in investors in a startup or they can be persons who can uh, uh, represent the interest of incubators and accelerators. Then they can also be people from a rep representative of association of stakeholders of startup. Then they can also be the representatives of industry associations like FICI etc. Now, these are non-official members. As far as official members are concerned, they will also be nominated by the central ministries, departments, organizations. Now, these nominees or the official nominees, they will not be below the rank of joint secretary and they will be the ex-official members of council. So, this is important. Please see once something uh, very, very important about the National Advisory Council. Recently, it has been uh, constituted so please see it once now question number seven in which africa african country has india recently inaugurated its first ever convention center so your options are niger nigeria sudan and tanzania so uh, answer is niger now indian external affairs minister uh, mr jashankar has recently inaugurated the first ever convention center of india in africa now, this convention center is named the Mahatma Gandhi International Convention Center or MGICC and it was inaugurated in, in Western African country of Niger and it was done with the assistance from India. Now, the International Convention Center was jointly inaugurated by Mr. Jashankar and by the president of Niger named Mahamodu Isofu. Now, this is the first ever visit by an Indian foreign minister to the West African country of Niger. Question number 8, 1t.org, a platform to support and conserve 1 trillion trees around the world was recently convened by which international organization? So your options are the Economist Intelligence Unit, then World Economic Forum, World Bank and Greenpeace. Answer is World Economic Forum. So during the 50th World Economic Forum annual meeting during 2020, Held at Davos, WEF along with, with its partners had launched a platform called 1t.org. Now this platform will support and conserve 1 trillion trees around the world. Now this plan was announced by founder and executive chairman of WEF named Klaus Schwab. USA has also joined this scheme 
and uh, this is a major initiative to tackle the climate crisis the initiative will also support other initiatives and organizations which work to conserve and restore the forest now this 1t.org is a platform that unifies and provide political support and helps in mobilizing funds next question which state has been ranked first in the list of india's top 10 states for leadership in energy and environmental design leed your options are kerala gujarat maharashtra haryana so the answer is maharashtra the us based leading certification agency called green business certification inc it has recently released a list of india's top 10 states for leadership in energy and environmental design also known as leed now in this ranking Maharashtra has been uh, placed at the top spot among the states. Now, this is the second year when Maharashtra has been placed at this uh, top spot. Now, the, this system of ranking, it ranks Indian states in terms of cumulative gross square meters or GSM of space certified by LEED system. So, what this company is, this is a certification company. It comes and certifies the building as uh, having energy and uh, leadership in energy and environmental design now that building area uh, is summed and such many such buildings will be there in a state now the area is summed together for a state and that will be called as cumulative gross square meters of space that is certified by LED system now as per that area Maharashtra is the first state which has the largest number of GSM of space, space which is certified by LEED. So, Maharashtra has attained more than 1 crore of GSM development and retains the top position. Now, the second spot is for, uh, occupied by Karnataka, third is place uh, is occupied by Haryana, fourth is Tamil Nadu and fifth is Uttar Pradesh. Question number 10. Which Indian wrestler was recently inducted in the government's AICS now your options are Sachin Tendulkar, Yogeshwar Dutt, Anjum Modgil and P.T. Usha. This is a very easy question because all those uh, of you who are interested in sports, you know which is the wrestler out of these. So the answer is Yogeshwar Dutt. The Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports has recently constituted the advisory body called All India Council of Sports or AICS. And this has been uh, extended the tenure has been extended of the body for a term of three years vk malhotra is the president of this body and the number of members have been reduced from 27 to 18. the new members which are inducted this year are yugeshwar dwat then also paralympian uh, deepa malik then mountaineer bachindri pal among some other people who have been inducted next question who is the first female president of greece your answer uh, options are Kolinda Graber Kitatovic. Uh, option B is Anna Branbic. Option C is Hilda Heen. And option D is Katrina Sakelara Polu. So your answer is Katrina Sakelara Polu. Now this uh, Katrina is elected as the first female president of Greece. Now the announcement was done or nomination was done by uh, Prime Minister of Greece named Kriakos Mistokis. Uh, she is 63 year old and she has worked as a top level judge in Greece. The current term of uh, President uh, Prokopis Pavlopoulos is to expire in March of this year. So um, Katrina will be expected to hold the office for a term of 5 years. Now, according to the Greek, uh, Greek constitution, the president is the commander in chief of country's armed forces like India and president is also often consulted on important uh, national affairs. Now, question number 12, which Indian state is set to use facial recognition software for its local body elections? Uh, this is a very interesting question and very interesting piece of news. Now, your options are Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala. Telangana. So, answer is Telangana. Now, Telangana State Election Commission has recently announced that it will be using facial recognition application in only 10 polling stations on a pilot basis. So, this is just an experiment they will be seeing how it works. 
now telangana with this experiment uh, pilot basis experiment it will become the first first state to implement the process of facial recognition in polls to curb impersonation of voters specifically you will see in state elections in panchayat elections and so on there are a lot of fake voters or voters impersonate each other so to curb this menace telangana is going to implement the facial recognition uh, software now the additional polling officer he will do what he will take a photograph of voters after verifying their identity identity proof this photo will be uploaded to the server using facial recogni recognition app and the data will be compared with the polling booth photos now this process is entirely encrypted and the data because data is very uh, um, private data so data privacy will be maintained and the data cannot be used for any other purpose now question number 13 which country has recently took over the chairmanship of group of 77 for the year 2020 so your options are chile palestine guam and guena answer is guena so the south american country of guena has recently taken over the chairmanship of group of 77 for the year 2020 from palestine palestine was heading this in the uh, year 2019 so g77 was established in 1964 in geneva and it is the largest intergovernmental organization of developing countries under the in the united nations india is also a member of g77 so you have to remember these uh, two things last two points are important that g77 was established in 1964 where in geneva second thing is india is a member of g77 okay this question is incomplete as per the recent survey of ceos by pwc which country has the highest growth prospects so your options should be india usa china and britain so your uh, answer is usa now leading consultancy firm pwc uh, has recently released the results of its annual survey of ceos across the world now this survey studied 1580 ceos across the world in 83 countries and uh, they ascertained that us has the highest growth prospect and second is follow it is followed by china now india is not very far behind india stood at number 4 however report also stated that the international economic growth would decline in next 12 months now question number 15 which ministry or organization presents the national bravery awards for children so your options are ministry of women and child development then ministry of defense then cara cara and indian council of child welfare so your answer is indian council of child welfare so the national bravery awards for 2019 were recently presented by indian uh, council for child welfare now these uh, 22 children were awarded the bravery award in this year among these 10 were girls and one award was given posthumously so the highest award in uh, in the national bravery award is called bharat award and it was given to a 15 year old boy called aditya from kerala now he had saved more than 40 lives after a bus accident now this indian council for child welfare was formed in 1952 and it initiated this award to recognize the children for their brave and spontaneous as well as selfless service or to show their daring act against a social crime so that is all in today's current affairs we will continue uh, the next current uh, tomorrow's current affairs tomorrow thanks a lot